All right, here we're going to be going over accounting for call or put options as a hedging investment. And it'll be based on the intrinsic value or the fair value of the option. Our example will be for a call option here where we have a varying commodity price and then we have a strike price or an exercise price that we can purchase this commodity at providing we buy an option. Now this option is, can be broken down into two components here, the intrinsic value component and a time value component. Now the intrinsic value of the option is its value here if this option were exercised today. And the time value of the option is the amount of which the price of this option exceeds the intrinsic value. For our example, we're going to go through each period. So we didn't exercise this option. We'll start at the purchase date of the option, and then we'll go through the expiration date of the option. And then we'll be given here the change in the commodity price for each period, and then this commodity strike price is given. And then we get over here into our option pricing. This is where we're going to have to determine the change between the beginning and the end of each period. So for our example here, say we pay $9.25 for this option, and then at in, that was at the beginning of the period. And at the end of the period, it was, was priced here at $9.75. So we had a positive change here of $0.50, cents, and I've got that indicated here in black. Now looking at the next period here, where we had a change here of $9.75, cents from the beginning of the period to six dollars here at the end of the period. So we had a change here of three dollars and seventy-five cents. So that was a uh, reduction here. So I indicated that as a negative change and that's noted here in red. So we also have to determine the change here in our uh, intrinsic value of the option and the time value of the option for each of those periods. Okay, here we're going to determine the intrinsic value of the option. This is where we compare the market price to the strike price, or the price that we can purchase this commodity at. So looking at our first period here where the market price is $125 versus a strike price here of $125. So the difference here is zero. So that's the intrinsic value of this option. Looking at the next period where the market price is $127.50 versus again the strike price of $125. So the uh, difference here is $2.25. So the difference between the periods here was from 0 to $2.25. So we had an increase here of $2.25. Looking at our next period here where we had a market price of $125.50 versus the strike price, uh, the difference here is $0.50. Cents. So the change between periods here was a negative $1.75, the $2.25 versus the uh, subtracting this $0.50 cents here. And looking at our next period here where the market price is $124.25 versus the strike price here of $125. So this is where we record zero for an intrinsic value because you can buy um, the commodity here at a lesser price than the strike price. And you can never have a negative amount here um, for your intrinsic value. Then looking at it, and then the difference between periods here would be the 50 cents versus the zero here. So we had a reduction here of 50 cents. Then looking at our last period here where the market price is 130.75 versus the commodity price here of 125. So we had a difference here of $5.75. So the change between periods here was from zero to 575. So we had a change here of $5.75. Okay, to determine the time value of the option. First we have to determine the change for each period for the market value of the option and then the change for each period for the intrinsic value of the option. And then we subtract the change for the intrinsic value from the change from the market value and that gives you the change here in our time value. So looking at our first case here where we had a 50 cent change here in our market value and you subtract a $2.25 change here in the intrinsic value and then you get a negative $1.75 here in your time value. So if we started out with a time value of $9.25 for the option, you subtract a $1.75 and your new time value here would be $7.50. And then uh, you would just continue on. 
subtracting the change here in the intrinsic value from the change here in your market value. So remember here you have to do a little bit of arithmetic. So looking at this period here we had a negative change here of $3.75 here in our market value and then you subtract out the negative change here of $1.75 for the intrinsic value and then your change here would be a negative $2. So uh, to determine our time value here we'd subtract the minus two dollars here from the beginning amount here of seven dollars and fifty cents and we'd come up with that five dollars and fifty cents so you just can continue on using that uh, subtracting this intrinsic value change from the market value change and then if we look at our uh, time value option here we started out with nine dollars and twenty five cents and then uh, at the expiration date here uh, the time value was zero or it had no time value here Okay, this is how we'd count for this call option on our balance sheet and our income statement. First thing we'd have to do is set up this call option account here as a temporary investment as an asset on our balance sheet. And we debit it or increase it for that call option premium that we paid. In this case, it was $9.25. And then we credit or reduce our cash account for that amount. And then we have to account for this option market price change. And we would do that in this call option account here. So any positive uh, changes here in this market price change would be debited to the call option account and any negative changes here would be credited or reduced this call option account. Then we have to account for the option intrinsic value change. And this is where we would set up this other comprehensive income as an, a part of stockholders equity on the balance sheet. And this would be our unrealized gain or loss. And any positive changes here in this intrinsic value would be credited to this uh, other comprehensive account and any negative changes here would be debited or reduce this other comprehensive income account. Now for our option time value change. This is where we'd recognize a gain or loss. And in this case we all we always had a decrease here in these time value changes here. So or a negative change here. So we debit it or we'd not be recognized in any game, but we'd be uh, recognizing a loss here. And that would be recorded here as part of net income on the income statement. So now if we look at our uh, comparing these accounts to see what our debit and credit balances is, would be, say we had a 50 cent debit amount here in a call option account, and then we'd match that with this credit of the um, other comprehensive equity account here for 225, and then the balancing amount here would be uh, in this gain or loss account here for $1.75. So we can match all our debits and credits here between our call option and our this other comprehensive income account, and they will balance here with the loss that we recognized here on our income statement. So if we look at um, summing these changes here between this unrealized gain and loss versus the loss that we recognized here, we would could determine the net loss amount here. So in this case, for unrealized gain and loss here and the other comprehensive income, we had $5.75 here. So, And then adding this $9.25 uh, loss here that we recognize to it, we'd have a, a net loss here of $3.50. Okay, to summarize, we had to determine the change for each period for the market price change, for the intrinsic value change, and for the time value change. And the intrinsic value, that was based on subtracting the strike price from the market price of that commodity. And then the time value, that was based on subtracting the intrinsic value change from the uh, market price change. And then we recorded here the market price change as part of our call option here uh, as an asset on the balance sheet. And then the intrinsic value that was recorded as an unrealized gain here as part of equity on the balance sheet. And then the time value that was recognized as a loss uh, on our income statement.